Okay, let's revisit some of the suspension issues. First one, tried to put in a ball joint and it broke. So, out of frustration, ordered a second one and cussed myself for not making it work. And it broke. Third one, actually got it in. And the reason I got it in is because the original Corvette ball joints are 1.61 inches wide. The Honda ball joints are 1.65. So this one got machined out so that it would fit. And also in the machining process, you have to make the holes a little more oblong to be able to fit the S10 hubs. And this one, because it's countersunk, also had to be moved a little bit. So, where we're at right now is this one should be good to go. You need to throw it in the bead blaster and clean it up a little bit. And then we should have one that looks like this. That's the left one and the right one. Get them cleaned up. Put them in the oven at 250 degrees for about half an hour. Then they should be able to slip right onto those and get bolted down. Okay, some very hot spindles with the hubs mounted. Yay! One more step completed. Okay, we got the body temporarily on the chassis. And now we're going to have to take a look at some of the mods are going to have to be made to make this thing work. Okay. Right away, I need, I need to move it back about an inch and a quarter with the door frame there to, to line up with that piece there. Now to do that, I'm going to have to cut off these little tabs on the front because these are just about hitting the front bumper. So I cut those off, I can move it back. What's more concerning though is if you look at the Diablo frame, it's not even close to where this needs to be clear over here. So that's going to have to be redone, moved over. So this is going to get cut out, new bar put over here. This may get moved over, this piece here may get moved over. We'll have to see. Now one of the problems has been in these cars, the footwell is really, really narrow because you've got your your brake and your clutch and your gas pedal all goes in that little spot there. So maybe I can move that wheel well over, but I really need to get my machine parts to test my suspension. And then I can see if I can make that wheel well a little, a little wider, maybe just move this whole section over uh, maybe an inch or two inches. And then we come to this center support here, which, as I mentioned before, the center console doesn't match this configuration at all. So I'll probably take these pieces out, put in just some new pieces, just straight, that are going to match the console, and then uh, brace them in. Before I do any cutting, though, I'm going to have to actually put some temporary bracing in here to hold everything in place. Uh, when I cut some of this stuff out. And then back here, I got a lot of space in the transmission tunnel to the back, which is good. Uh, but I can take some braces off of here and come back and tie into the back bumper here. So, I guess the bottom line is the North American Exotics chassis has some good points to it, but then there's some things that don't line up very well. If we look up here, you can see that the back firewall is nowhere close to where the roof is. So we're going to have to fabricate a piece to go up there to tie into the roof. Of course, got to put uh, supports, roll bar basically in the roof on all of this before I can go too much farther. 
So, all in all, it's fixable. Uh, just need to, took me a while to get it up here, but there it is. Okay, <laughs> easy way to move your chassis around. My two furniture dollies from Harbor Freight. Works great. Okay, here we go. This let the modifications begin. So here's what we're starting with. And I'll keep you updated as I go along. Okay, the next step in the process was to actually mount the one by two clamped under the door sills as to where they're going to go and then measure the distance between those points. Now I'm going to get out the plasma cutter here in a second, cut out these side rails, but before I do that I put up some temporary bracing to hold that in place so once I cut those out nothing's going to move. At least that's the plan. Okay, I've set the chassis five inches off the ground and I have actually adjusted the supports moving them outwards to catch the door frame. These are all just tacked in right now. Totally redid the whole subsection of the floor. I'll post dimensions later on as to what I did. The dash Fits down, it's clamped down right now. The problem we've got is the offset. I've got the body about five or five and a quarter inches off the ground, but this wheel well is just just does not fit. So gonna be some body work. There. I'm a little, little disappointed to be honest. The uh, front, I got that's about five inches off the ground. So it's going to be some more work. Now, of course, the rear does sag, so that's set at 16 and a half inches off the ground, which again allows the opening of the wheel wells to be where they need to be and it brings up the the edge in there to five and a quarter inches. So we'll have to put some supports off the back to hold that up but that'll come a little later. Now that I've made the modifications for the basically replacing the whole center of the North American chassis I've had several people ask me you know what were the modifications I've made and could I get some dimensions? So here are the dimensions. Now this is just the basic framework. None of the supports have been added in, but um, I have put this under the body as you've seen in the video and it seems to work really good. I used to have to go back and add in the supports along the frame and of course tying in the, the rear firewall to the roof. Uh, those are all things left to be done. So here are the dimensions.
I thought it would be interesting. Lots of people say, well, what do these things cost? So on each of my videos, I'm going to try to add my to date costs. Um, now, part of this is I already had chassis partially completed, which I haven't I haven't included that in, in my estimates or my, my running totals. Um, but uh, I'll keep this updated as, as we go along so that people can get an idea of, of what the material costs are. This doesn't include any labor, but just things that I've actually purchased uh, to get to the point where I am now. So I'll include the costs. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you would and turn on your post notifications and uh, so you'll get notified on my next update. Thank you and hope you enjoyed this.